All right, we are back. Another amazing, really closing out February. I can't believe we've been connecting on Sunday night since the summer. It's, it's awesome. And last week we had Brandon Beck on to talk about his book, uh, Unlocking Unlimited Potential. We're doing a book study, as, as you know. And it really got me thinking this week because I also had an opportunity to connect with another friend of mine, a code breaker, Darren Pepper, who wrote Road to Awesome. And there's two book studies going on right now. I wanted to hear what other educators have read and really been impactful to them. So that's going to be something that we talk about tonight and to share with, with Emily and all the new educators who, who watch this. It was really exciting. I had another principal reach out to me this week from Massachusetts who says they use this as part of their mentor program. So part of their, um, you know, in Massachusetts, we have the, you have to have a year one mentor sign off to get your professional status. Um, and I run the mentor program in, in, in our district. So we meet monthly and they said that they use this as part of their hours that they send out the link and stuff. So I was like, that's cool. Like people are, people are using it. And I said, well, this week we're going to talk about um, books that people have used. So um, psyched about that. So Ariel, Emily, Carrie, Melissa, welcome. How, how are you doing? I know Carrie, you were a little down last week. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling this week? Much better. We had a really good week. We got back on schedule. Because like last week we had a snow day and then the district got their second vaccination. So they made Friday a, a remote day. And then I realized that I was just either worn out from life and teaching or the shot too. And so now my energy's back. We had a full week of just like a more regular schedule and it just feels like the kids and I are getting our stride back. And so that was just, it was a really, it was a really good week. Awesome. And Emily, if I remember correctly, it's been a little bit of a week for me. Uh, you had something last week where you didn't know if you were coming back or not, or was that the, the week before? Um, that was the week before. So we, okay. I think that might've been Molly, like something was happening with her students yeah, yeah. Like coming back and forth. One of her other team teachers like needed to leave. So she was taking some students and wasn't sure how that was working, but we are in, um, I think this is the third full week that we've been in since like Thanksgiving going fully remote. So we are hanging in there. So yeah, far, and, Hamden and the County case. is back down like to a certain percent where if we get one case, we don't have to shut down anymore. So we'll be, we'll be probably in for a while. Knock on wood. I think we're well, okay no, now. Big, big, big announcement big in Massachusetts was that the commissioner wants everyone back essentially you know, yeah. April 5th. So yeah. we'll see what, what happens with that. I don't see how that's <laughs> possible <laughs> at all. And, and Melissa, you've been out all year, so that doesn't hasn't impacted you. You probably had the best attendance of anybody here because it hasn't been hybrid or back and forth. The kids are there. And um, speaking about reading, I'd love for you to share. I know we were talking about before we started your project for this week that I'm definitely going to participate. I know Ariel already did. I saw hers, and we're trying to recruit my mom to to, to read if she can get onto Flipgrid. So what do, what do you share with us? What you're doing? So it's Read Across America next week. So I'm asking all my Twitter fam, Voxer fam, uh, my kids' parents, and anyone who wants to share their favorite story on the grid, on Flipgrid. And then I will give that to my kiddos and my class, and they can have story for as long as they want. Should be many, many stories come up it. Awesome. Do you have the link to like even throw in the chat for people? Who I can are... get it and throw it in. Yep. Okay, awesome. That's a, but if you go onto Twitter and see your, it's on there. And, and Ariel, how's your week been? Did I see some like accomplishments I'm, on the Peloton celebrations this week? I'm good. I just work out a lot. I feel like my life is at a bit of a standstill. Work is good, and no news is always good news. So everything's fine. Been you know relaxing. I'm like Carrie. I had my second vaccine recently, so now I feel a little bit more comfortable in life again, and just happy to have some nice weather. It was beautiful here yesterday. We had beautiful 50 degrees sun. I finally was able to get outside again, hoping for the snow to melt so the kids can get outside too. Indoor recess is getting a little old. So <laughs> waiting for outdoor recess. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, so I want to dig into to some of the books that you all have read, or, or, or I know Emily, your first year teacher, I'm not dismissing that you haven't read any impactful educator books, but some <laughs> that, um, not, gonna lie, I have not so I'll be taking notes on okay. something today. I'll be an <laughs> observer here. <laughs> I, I definitely have two that I was, I'm going to share. I'll share the second one later. One's more of an administrative one, really 
led to my study, but one I definitely want to talk about, Manny Scott. I had a chance to meet him at uh, Empower, actually Empower 18 in Boston. And um, the book is, you can be your student's best hope even on your worst day. So it really talks about how you can uh, be there for your students. And, and really it's about building relationships. And um, I think I'm really drawn to it because I had a chance to meet with him and actually was part of his uh, speaker network when he started to do some coaching of speakers and different things. So it's a wicked uh, short, you know, small read, a, you know, a quick read, but it really just dives into how you can build relationships. And even if you're having uh, a tough day at work or a tough life, of, you know, life is having a tough week for you that when you go in, your, your kids just look at you as this is the most important day for them each and, and every day and really dives into the, the importance of, of relationships and, and, and communication. So that was definitely one that I've, uh, you know, gone back to. And, and actually, I, I didn't have it when I was a teacher. And I, you know, can say reading isn't something that is as high on my, my list. And once I became a principal, I started to look into to more books. And I got this actually when I was a district leader. So we've been past that. But it was one where now I'm able to do some principal coaching and talk about how the importance of it. So I would definitely recommend that as one that I've read that was impactful for me. So I'm gonna throw it over, throw it over to the team if, if you wanna share one. Great, I just got up and got another book. I just wanted to show, we had um, Kristen Nan and JC Maslick on a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago and this was one of my favorite books. It was one of my first read to lead book studies. I started um, this book at the very beginning of the pandemic last year and it was just, a strange time to be part of a read to lead book study with people that I didn't know that I would be so connected with through this entire pandemic. So this is all in, it's one of my favorite books. It um, discusses how to go all in with your relationship and just create opportunities for yourself with chance and risk taking and a lot of uh, Vegas analogies of rolling the dice and taking risks. And I would recommend this to anybody in any form of education very first year, which is a great year to take risk because you don't know any better all the way through veteran teachers. This is a great read for anyone. And um, Kristen and JC, I really admire you and I'm really grateful that they were able to be here. And Kristen is very involved. We get to work with her a lot. So one of my favorites. Um, yeah, I'm gonna save my next one for a little bit because this one's a little bit more boring. So I will wait yeah. until some <laughs> other fun ones come around. And no, the author's not, you know, part of our PLN. So I'm saying boring. You'll see why it's yeah. not one uh, of our. No, I had a chance to meet um, to meet them both in Florida um, at FETC in Orlando, and they were just dynamic. Um, we actually have an, a book signing at the same time, and that's how I got to know both of them, and it was awesome to see them. And 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 what I've been finding really. Um, awesome about meeting some of these authors is they're just regular folks like all of us. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, Kristen is, is a third grade teacher in, in Pennsylvania, and I think in Pittsburgh, and, and JC's a, a district administrator. And, you know, I met a few other people there, and I, I even see in the chat now, like Christine Rebasi and, and, and Tracy are, are publishing books. Like, it's just part of us, and it's great to have a chance mm -hmm. to meet some of these authors and see, like, they're doing the same jobs. And and, and they're being a part of what we do. So th that's another great recommendation. I sure. loved I loved this book when I read it because I started this last February and I didn't expect the world to, I mean, nobody that expected the world to go into the place that it did. And the whole theme of this book is taking risks. And we took the biggest risk that we ever did in education last year. And everything that we discussed, it's like our whole topic in our book study just switched from how do you take the risk in the classroom in your brick and mortar traditional room to moving online. So I found this book to be, I guess we laugh about it, coincidentally very impactful and we didn't expect it to impact us the way that it did. And I hold this book and the, the memories that I have from working with them really near and dear to my heart because this was a very challenging time. And to have this book and the ideas that I learned from it, I learned a lot and I grew a lot. So I love this one, I really recommend it. Again, it was all in taking a gamble in education, one of my favorites. Awesome. Hey Molly. Hey Molly, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Sorry. How was the, how was the summer meeting? You good to go? They didn't fire you? <laughs> no, they didn't fire me. Oh, good. It was good. good. They're just talking about how it's going to work 
at a summer camp with like COVID and stuff, but it's a lot of changes. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that's good. So do you two intentionally put the names backwards? I don't know. They're, they're forward on ours. Yeah. Oh, really? They, yes, the Emily's under be... my face and Molly's under Molly's face. No, it's, so and every week it's it's backwards. So, so like somebody said that um, last week, I think Brandon called you obviously oh. the one. Oh, I'll switch it. That's so bizarre. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll switch it and see. That better? There it is. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. So weird. Um, awesome. So Molly, uh, Emily's taking notes. So uh, good to go and we're recording it so you can always just watch it back again um, uh so others did you want to share what, what you thought about sure i can share mine i i didn't i don't not a big this sounds terrible but i'm not when it comes to like reading i usually go after books that are not necessarily related to education but i've had really great success with that because i find that the more i can fill myself up away from my classroom with experiences that fill me up as a creator that only enriches my time in my classroom and I don't know if it's happy accidents or just the way think the world works for me but things that I do outside of my classroom do roll into my classroom eventually and so when I get a chance to create outside my classroom there's always some impact in my classroom and so this book I tell I've told my two children it's called um the crossroads of should and must um oh, by, Ella Luna, by Ella Luna and I honestly will buy this book for, for both of my children um, in the next couple of years for them to read it. And so she takes her takes us through a journey of being an artist, but also having a day job and how she decides on her shoulds and her musts when going after her goals in life. And so it's really big, you know, big dream goals for me. Um, you know, I remember camping with my family and filling out a lot of this book. And it's just, I mean, it is absolutely stunning too. So it's all watercolored and there's places for you to write down ideas and let me find like, so it's just, it's just really, really pretty. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, title um, in the chat, Carrie. I can type it in the chat. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, but there's places in here where you get to write down what you want your dreams to be like, if you could do anything like, I love this. It's like kind of a fill in the blank sketch note kind of a thing. And so when I look back to this, um, I remember filling out all of these at camping with my family. And it says like, what are my dreams to write a book? Did that, um, to do art, um, to do Stanley as art. And then I think somewhere in here is something about a YouTube channel. So nice. I did this, yeah, vlogging. So I did this a couple of years ago, but really thinking about my shoulds and my musts and the fear and just, you know, just taking chances and things like that. It's just, to me, it was a really impactful book that really just was really meaningful to so just driving a lot of my creative dreams. And maybe some of us have dreams outside of our classroom, or maybe we have dreams in our classroom. And it's just, it was really, um, it was really impactful for me. Awesome. Um, and I see some people sharing in the chat. If you want to come on, just throw it in the chat. If you want to jump on over and you can share one of the books or books um, that you've had, um, we'd love to have you. And, and Molly, I'm going to say the same thing I said to Emily. It's not that I didn't think you've read any books and feel free to jump in on anything that, that you've seen or, or read. It's more just trying to gather some things as we've learned um, going through the process, for sure. You want me to go? Sure. Okay, I hate reading and I, I know that's horrible. Oh. <gasps> Yeah. No, listen, it's a struggle. I, it's no, a struggle for me, for true. sure. Okay. My That's mom's okay. on here. She can tell you that. The traumatic message I just said. I don't hate reading now. I hated reading in high school. I hated reading in college. I hated reading when I first became a teacher. But when I started Twitter and started growing my fam, then I started loving to read because it was more meaningful to me as opposed to the other. I can sit and read read alouds for second grade all day long. I am so into that. But the other Great. stuff I just wasn't into. So I have a crap load of books, but- <laughs> That's a lot. Book, how, do you, how do you quantify that? A crap load. Okay, this book <laughs> from Rochelle. Oh yeah. It's just on. Um, this is not your 
how to or guide for teaching. This is all stories from teachers about a certain kid. And also it has Abby's story in it too. Awesome. So it makes it that much more special. So there's tons of stories in here from amazing, amazing educators. So I love this book, it's great. Does one make up a crap load or do you have others? I have others, but I thought we were taking turns. Okay, I know. I also had uh, <laughs> Tracy come on over. So I think she's gonna share when uh, she, she pulls on her, puts on her camera. So while we wait for her, Melissa, dive into the crap and see what else you got. Okay, I have this book. Yeah, I was waiting for somebody to put that up there. Yeah, yeah. Especially Tell me about that book. Sketchbook Challenged Individual. What that is that? Me. Tell me it's, about that book. It looks like a pretty cool it's book. It's just an amazing, it goes through, um, there's quotes in here, there's great sketches, there's just like visual alphabet. So it's just great like graphics and getting into sketch noting and I don't know. It's Who's just, the author? It's the great Carrie Balcom. What? That's awesome. Yeah, if you don't follow her, you need to. <laughs> All right, Carrie show. Um, so right. Carrie, I will ask you since since Melissa brought it up, um, kind of what inspired you to write that? Like what, what tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, it started as a YouTube video. Um, and then um, I was up in Milwaukee at a conference called Spark and Marlena mm -hmm. Gross Taylor uh, gave a keynote there and I sketch noted it and um, shared it out. And then I think a year or so later, she reached out to me on Twitter and said, you know, you really should write a book. And I was like, you know, no, there's, there's, there's enough of them out there. There doesn't need to be another sketch noting book by someone else, you know? Um, but obviously she convinced me to. And so um, I, um, I just really shared my story. And I would say like the Ella Luna book, um, if you, mm -hmm. the, the style that she wrote it in, like just telling her story and genuinely just going through her story really did inspire my book as well as just, you know, just telling it how it is and bringing people through it. But I also wanted people to connect with sketchnoting in a really unique way. Cause I think that Oftentimes we hear the same message when it comes to sketchnoting. And I wanted people to see sketchnoting not as this big whole picture um, of, of art or just not a whole page full of things. I wanted people mm -hmm. to see that with on that page, there's single things that people can do to bring into their classroom. And that is sketchnoting too. And then ultimately, um, I, al I also wanted people just really to realize that when it comes to creating and sketch noting with our, or drawing with your students, there really are no rules. It, whatever it is for you and for your students, that is powerful and that and that's meaningful too. Awesome. And it has family and it has the learning mascot. The learning mascots. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hey Tracy, welcome back. Hey guys. How's I know you spent I know you spent a Sunday with with Emily one time, so we're, yeah. we're psyched to have you. So you shared a book which I actually like the title before eight because I'm up early. I like to go for a walk. I like to do actually a lot of my writing and, and work before 7 a.m. So fill us in on what you were going to share. Okay. So first of all, forgive the lighting because I'm not in the studio. I know you weren't um, expecting to be on it. That's I get it. <laughs> but I appreciate but, you jumping over. Thanks. So so the deal about this book and really any what, other what was the name again? Just oh. five things successful people do before 8 a.m. I like it. So it's by Terry Savelle Foy and her dad is a prominent pastor, I think. So there is scripture kind of woven throughout the book. However, um, one of our PLN friends on Twitter got the book and, and she's Jewish. And she said, well, you know, I'm a little bit nervous. And she read it. She's like, you know what? That didn't interfere or, or take away from the message for me talking about her and her faith. So I wanted to say that, but any book like this, I think it's really about where we are mentally. Like mm -hmm. if, if I were reading something on weight loss, <laughs> I read something on weight loss like years ago and I'm like, oh yeah, chips, not at 10 o'clock, you know? So it's really about where you are mentally. And when I read this book last year, I was finally mentally ready to overcome fear and, and 
push, crush those obstacles, crush all of those barriers. So this book really came at the right time for me. What I like about the book is she has, um, she's done extensive research with some of the most successful people in the world, not necessarily all famous, but, but just these people who have built their own empires and every single one up well before 8 a.m. Like they've done a full day's work right. when a lot of us are just getting up. So it just makes you realize how much time we waste. And now I, I my, my mind is wired. Like I rarely sleep in because I realize I'm sleeping on myself. You know what I mean? Um, so it's just a game changer. If, if you're mentally ready to like conquer some fears and, and just seize everything, it's a great book. It's a great book. Awesome. Now that sounds great. And I was joking about Christine earlier, but she has a shirt. I saw we were doing a session and said 458 runner, like she's up and working out and running early. And I think, um, I think it's just great. I mean, I, I, I can relate, but I think Ariel typed in the chat, like uh, not a morning person. Oh, and I should say, I'm so not a morning person, like, mm -mm, mm -mm, but 446, sorry. Made me, it jokes. made me think uh, differently, made me think differently. Nice. Oh, okay. So somebody must have typed in the chat that they weren't a morning morning. No, I am like the morning person. <laughs> oh, <Melissa. laughs> so I'm that not book is morning person. Ariel okay. is morning person. That I'm book not. is totally calling my name, Tracy. Nice. I'm awesome. Right well, Tra <laughs> Tracy, thanks for, for jumping over and always adding some great stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry to pull you out. I know people are like, ah, I, I'm, oh, uh, I didn't mind. No problem. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, Christine, sorry, I gypped you about eight to 10, 12 minutes on the 446 runner. <laughs> um, awesome. So Ariel, you said you had another book that was... Okay, so I have a not really fun book, but it's very helpful. It's called The Dissertation Warrior, and it is a very simple guide to writing your dissertation for the lazy person who doesn't really want to write your dissertation, which is me. And <laughs> I needed this book because I needed a push and I needed some encouragement and it's broken up into chapters. Um, there's That's 64 a book. Yeah, it's big. There are 64 chapters. It's kind of encouraged to read like one every week until you feel ready to get started. And I am always looking for professional development to help me build motivation and encouragement. I, like all of us, I'm very busy and I forget about things and I'll get really excited and then I'll start something and then kind of just drop down. So this is, um, the Dissertation Warrior by Guy White, and I read one chapter and then put it down for a very long time, so now I need to pick it back up and read chapter two through 64, but I have skimmed it, so I can definitely attest that it's some good stuff in here, but um, I am always looking for guides and ways to help me organize my life, so if anybody has any recommendations for self-help books to help me write this dissertation and get it done, I am so open to it. Yeah, I... Um... I had one when I was writing it, not that title. I think it was write your dissertation 15 minutes a day where you just mm -hmm. would write a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's like things like that too. I, so if I we're throwing that. out boring books uh, and for, the, <laughs> for, for our leaders out there, I, I would never say this because it was one of the first times um, it was three minute classroom walkthrough mm -hmm. and a lot with, uh, ah, hurt my hand, sorry. And a lot by Elizabeth City. Um, and so when I was a principal, that was one of my um, real kind of drives is to make sure to visit every classroom every mm -hmm. day and then make sure to spend more time in each grade level one day a week. So throughout the week, I would see every class every day and then spend five or 10 minutes in every grade level. So if I, you know, we had, when I was in Natick, we had four to five classes, like first grade. So if I spent 10 minutes, it's only an hour out of my day. Like I could do that. Spend 10 I think minutes. that's so nice. I hope that that becomes the normal. I, I have, I'm fortunate. I have administrators that do that, but I hope that that becomes the normal of administrators walking around buildings because that doesn't seem so common. And I love hearing that. Yeah. It was, you know, I'd say lead with your feet and not mm -hmm. from your seat. And I think <laughs> for, for one, I was bored. I'm, let's get honest with you. I, I just had to get out and, and move around, high five some kids and, and pester the teachers, number one. But it also it, it um, gave you a flavor of what was going on in the district, and if I was going to give authentic feedback, uh, I wanted to see what they were were doing. And I think, and I know 
you know, some of you in here and, 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 and watching know that Christine Bemis and I know each other and she worked in Milford. Um, and that's how I kind of met her is just, I did the same thing as a district leader. I tried to get to every school every day and, and just spend time in classrooms and, and, and pester kids and, and make, you know, be, you know, see what people are doing and engage. So I think that was, that was great. And it was, and, and one story about Elizabeth City who does a lot with you know walkthroughs and, and learning walks and different things like that. I was writing my dissertation. That was a basis of a lot of what I did. My study was on enhancing school culture. And this was one of them being seen, like you were just talking about. And she was in an event and I don't get like starstruck by me, but I was like, I have to see her. And like, I met her and she, and again, she was just a regular person. Like, and I was like, oh my God, Miss City, can I get a picture with you? Like, I was like starstruck because I got to, to meet Elizabeth City. And, you know, I was in Boston, I told you, and at the time I met Jill Biden and I was like, hey, Jill, can I take a picture? Like, we're best friends in Elizabeth City. I'm like <laughs> freaking out, like, yeah, oh my God, Elizabeth City, write my dissertation about you. So that was, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was boring to me, but it might be one that might be boring to others. But for leaders out there, the, the three minute classroom walkthrough is, is one that I would highly recommend. So Emily and Molly, you taking all this in? Are you feeling like it's overwhelming? Are you like, where, where are you, how does this feel? What's, what are your thoughts right now? I know it's a lot and you get a lot on your plate in this whole reading thing, summer project, but. Yes, definitely a summer project. I think it's nice to know. I like some of the ones that Melissa and Carrie were talking about too, that seem more like interactive. I think that that would be something that's good for me right now before getting into the more organizational things. I think I need a bit more time under my belt to be able to like get all of that in and then figure out how to organize it. But I think the interactive one sounds like something I would probably enjoy like this summer or starting next year, like once I have a little more experience here. Well, Molly and Emily, my first teacher professional development book that I got from a new teacher meeting was Mindset by Carol Dweck. And I definitely recommend this to new teachers or to anybody, I, not just in education, but this is a great place to start. If you want professional development that's based off of research, but not super heavy, this is one of my favorites. It's an amazing read. A lot of people in the education community know it. You could also just Google it and read. I mean, I recommend the book, but you could also just read about the ideas too. But this is a big one for education. Most, I would assume most people know Carol Dweck, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a pretty common name, but um, I, I would start here okay. for like, for like, <laughs> like, um, like big reads, <laughs> not so much like interactive fun reads, which are the good, that's the good stuff. I, I love yeah. the interactive fun stuff. <laughs> right. And I think this the is the big, boring stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is and it isn't. But yeah, I think, you know, that one talks boring about, <laughs> um, that one talks a lot about um, just the growth mindset and stuff. So Christine, you like anxious. Do you want to come over and tell us a little bit about that awesome book? See, see, see what snarky remarks she gives me in the uh, in the chat. But it is an amazing. It's an awesome book as well. I would hold it up, but I have it at work because I try to read, you know, pieces of it um, throughout the week and, and share with it. So, other thoughts, other things that not the book. You can still come and share about the awesomeness of it. Um, other things that people. So um, Molly and Emily, another one as far as an interactive book, the, the Merrills have put out a book about the interactive classroom. And the most recent one was about um, interactive with Flipgrid. And I know we were just talking about that recently. So I don't wanna go back and forth because I'll be like dead air for a minute, but I'll, I'll try to connect with that, with that book as well. Um, I think it's, it'd be a good resource for you as, as well. So Melissa, into your crap load again. So we've had two. What else you got up on that that pile? You're on mute. Well, I know. Okay. Everybody is really good. It's by Kristen Zimke. Um, I actually saw her speak. Carrie's giving me a thumbs up. She's amazing. It's one of those where you go to a conference and you're like, oh gosh, I'm gonna sit and get the whole time because I'm not good with that. I'm like, I don't know, ADD or something or ADHD, whatever. Uh, but this is amazing. I left with so many ideas that I did right then and there, like the next day. So this is a really good 
a good book. And if you guys give me your address, I'll send it to you because I've already read it. So that way you don't have to buy it. Yeah, um, she's, neat, she's such a neat person. You don't want it, what? She's such a neat person. Like she's just yeah. really smart and well and very thoughtful. Down to earth, got a yes. bunch of Snapchat selfies with her. It was great. Um, and then Tamara Letters, Passion for Kindness. This is a great oh. book too. Um, I'm in this book too. So whoa, whoa, famous. <laughs> Yeah. So it's a great book, especially if you want to, you know, spread the kindness. There's great stories and activities and things to do with your fam. Um, George Kuros, Innovator's Mindset. It's a must have. This guy is amazing. I think that's another must. Yeah. yeah so that's I, a big yeah, one. Must have. He's great. I actually was on a, oh, I forget who did it. Oh, I lost her name. Um, I got to ask him a question and chit chat with him and he's a great guy. Very down to earth, funny. Mandy Freilich, uh, Fire Within. She has a couple of books, but this yeah, she's another edge of match. Mindset, SEL. She's amazing. Love her. So if you read the email I sent out today, Emily Malley, her, she's in there. You can click on the links to learn yeah. a little bit about her. Yeah. And then, um, Jennifer Costa Todd's social media. This is a must for the classroom. Um, she's like my sis, love her to death. Um, but she's amazing. She, her and um, Mike Dressick do um, a social, like kids do their own Twitter chat. And it's amazing. It's once a week, I think it's once a week or once a month, but she asked a few of my kids to join. They were like the youngest she's ever had on the Twitter chat, but they run the conversation. Um, and it's amazing. Talk about empowerment for kids. So this is all about um, the social media and how to be socially, um, use social media um, purposefully without, help me out, Carrie. No, she's just got great ideas for you to take, like take your kid's voice and amplify it by using social media. So she's got great, uh, lots of research. It's really smart and well-written, but then there's also ideas of kids making really, um, doing things in a really big way, using social media to really amplify their ideas and share their stories and share their voice. It's just really, it's a really fun, there's lots of, you could flip through it and pick out ideas or you could read the whole thing. It's got a lot of great ideas on the, in there. It's, it's great for districts who say no Twitter or no to this because it really opens the door as to why you need to open the door to social media. And then the last one is Be Real by Tara, uh, Tara Martin. Um, I think so. I know somebody who did the illustrations in there too. I think I'm in it too. We're both in this book. But I mean, I think, the, I think the, the drawings in there are by somebody I know. You? I'll have to Me look. Too. You two are incredibly famous. Look at this. Oh, you have, I did the sketch noting for the chapter. You didn't. You didn't know I was in it. We should both look and see if we can find ourselves. I read the whole thing. I drew the. I drew the sketch notes for Tara. No, I know, but I'm in this book too. So I. Is there a book you're not in, Melissa? At this point, let's let's get let's go the opposite I direction. I didn't know. I'm gonna go through and look, Carrie. But this is great. This is more of you and how to take care of you. And yeah. you are the most important person before taking care of others. Um, so yeah. Nice. Are, okay. All right, now you got, you, got, you got your major list and I'm trying to recruit Christine to come over but she doesn't feel uh, to promote her own book but Anxious, you know, another times 10 book like the, the Modern Mentor, no shameless plugs. Mm. Um, talks a lot about um, anxiety and how to help students. Oh, look at those great pictures. And can you show she, them just Melissa? Can you show off for me just for a second? Can you show them one of the sketch notes, Melissa? <laughs> she's not listening. Melissa. She, she's on mute. She can I hear know. them. Will you show them one of the like the full pages? Just show off for me. Thank you. Nice. It was so fun to draw. Look at that. Also, it's a lot harder to draw in white on black than you would think. I'm just gonna say. I'm sure it is. Okay, that's good. Can we get the page you're on to? Oh, it's hidden in the oh. back. All right, well, we'll put it put a sticky note in. Um, so I was saying with Christine's book, uh, Anxious, it talks about, you know, I've seen her do a lot of presentations too about how to support students, what to say when students are having 
really difficult times. And the, I think the chapters that are the most impactful for me are what not to say. And I usually say them all. Like as a principal, I was doing a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have said in my very um, male, straightforward, loud voice of like, you're fine, like, come on, you know, stand up or, or all these other things that I probably shouldn't have said. So I've learned a, a lot, not only from, from reading the book Anxious, but from, from knowing her and, and seeing her present. So that'd be another one. Uh, I would put on the list to really look at, we talked a lot about the technology, we've talked a lot about our growth mindset here, and I think that one for social emotional, really having that, that lens to support students and in, in, in it, you know, because just because I know the, the, the layout, because my book is very similar, we have to write in a structure of we share a story and then strategy, so it goes into actual stories of either that she's had in, in the classroom or some of her students and then strategies to help. So I think, you know, I'm a little biased towards some of the lead forward books being one of the authors, but I like that style of stories and then the strategies to support it as well. So did we overwhelm you yet, Molly and Emily? Are we getting close? Oh, double-sided. You should get we gotta get you a little bit bigger notepad. Every time you show us your notes, it's on like a well, sticky I wasn't, note. I wasn't expecting such a long list, honestly. So, <laughs> but I flipped it over. <laughs> awesome, great. Um, so, well, I mean, we cruised, we're at 41 minutes already. So we, got, we are about almost at our 9.15 or at least Eastern. Tracy must be uh, either eating late or uh, I think she's in Texas, so a little bit behind us anyways. I was wondering that too, that's late dinner. My family yeah. would be like gnawing at each other <laughs> and yelling if we ate this late. It would not be, it would not be pretty. I'm um, sure. Um, so before we, we head off, I wanna end with, because this is National uh, Read Across America Week, what are, if, and again, this is off the cuff, but just to share, we've talked a lot about our books, but. What would be a book that you, or what is a book you love to read to a class? Like what is a book that has been one that is one of your, your favorites um, that you like to, to read? So, so one that I, I like is Mr. Peabody's Apples is one that I try to read to students, mostly probably third or fourth grade. It talks about lying and, and what the impact of telling a story. And I won't get into the details of it, not that it's a, it's a thriller, but um, there, there, <laughs> there is a point in it that talks about um, the, the purpose of it. So that's definitely one that, that I like to, to read to a class. Melissa, you must have a ton, a crap ton that you like. What would be one? You gotta pick one that you're gonna read to your class. And then Emily and Molly, I'm definitely, this is one you can contribute to because as elementary teachers, you should have some. I probably, this is my most favorite. Oh, I have so many most favorites, it's so bad. Um, I love Each Kindness, I think that's what it's called. I'll look when someone else goes, but it's about a girl who comes to school new, is new to the school and she's in ragged clothes and secondhand. And she's there, I think it's like third or fourth grade, maybe your guys' grade. And the friends are kind of whisper when she walks by and she's always smiling and she's always happy and she wants to play. And um, in school, they talk about kindness and how it ripples back to you. And it's really important to spread that kindness because you never know when you won't be able to spread it or touch that certain person. So the little girl realizes what she's doing and the next day she wants to say hello to the little girl and she's gone. She moves away. Oh no. And she doesn't get the chance to even say. And I think it's just so impactful for kids to realize that their actions really matter, especially as they get older, their voice is the most important thing that they ever have and to speak up and and say something. So it's a great book. I'll look for it while you guys talk. Absolutely. Um, well, I won't put any notes on the spot, but if you had one, I'd love to, to hear if you, you know, I went and got it because I'm oh. very passionate about this book. I read this for Melissa's flip grid and then I realized it was a little, it's like really deep and philosophical and it's probably not a kid's book. I love Shel Silverstein. I find his poetry just fantastic. It's like whimsical and just so amazing. But my favorite book is The Missing Piece. And there's just something so special about this book. I use this from 
like second grade all the way up to high school. It's a book about a circle that is looking for its missing piece. And when it finds that piece, it realizes it doesn't feel fulfilled. And there's a deeper philosophical meaning behind the book of that you don't feel fulfilled when you're always searching for the ending and it's being part of the journey. And I love tying this book into just teaching children and young adults about the life lessons of you should enjoy the journey and not necessarily the destination. And we have some great discussions and there's some songs in here and some poetry and it's just very funny. I love using this coffee though. I showed this in Melissa's Flipgrid today because I've had this coffee since I was a child and I must have loved it so much. I drew in it and all the pages that were supposed to be blank, I colored in like the little butterfly and the little circle. So my students get a kick out of this because they're like, you draw in your books? I'm like, yeah, you could draw in your books too, as long as they're yours. And that's like a, you know, a funny thing for children to understand that you can draw and write inside your own copy of your book. And then I just teach them too about using your imagination. So this is one of my favorites, but I love Shel Silverstein. I love awesome. all of his books, all of his poetry. Awesome. Melissa, you found the book. This is the book. And nice. I think it's a like a Caldecott winner. I can't remember. And then this book is super funny. You know that <laughs> book? Super funny. I think Anne Cosma zoomed with us and read this book, which was even more hilarious. So nice. So Miley and Emily, do you have one? Is you still you're still like searching for that sweet spot of, of, of read aloud books? Um, one of my favorites that I have, I mean, besides all the classics, but one that I just read for the first time um, with my students is called Happy Right Now. And I thought it was really cute. Um, it's about a girl and it's just like talking about all the like, it kind of like went with my students who are fully remote, like all these like bad things that are happening and like, it might be raining, but like talking about finding like the silver lining and like the happy things like, and then at the end, it also says like, it's okay. Like you can be sad today. And like, if you just want to lay in bed, like it's fine. Or like, if you just want to do that, like it's okay. But you can be like happy tomorrow or, or like find something else small that's happy. And I thought that worked well for my kids at home because it just like stinks about all of these things, why they're not with their friends or why they're with this. And then they kind of talked about silver linings with, well, I am with my family or I can be in my pajama. So I thought it was nice at the beginning of the school year for them. Awesome. Yeah, so I feel like most of the ones that I have been reading this year have been more of like classic stories just because we have a reading program with read aloud. So those gotcha. stories kind of what we've mostly been reading but one of my favorites which I'm sure most of you have read is um a bad case of the stripes mm. and so I feel like that book is really good for third grade because I feel like third grade is kind of when kids can kind of start to compare to one another and to start not bullying but like thinking that they're cooler than one another or starting with that whole thing. And the story is about a girl who really likes lima beans. And she says that she doesn't like lima beans because people think they're gross around her. And then she grows stripes all over her body and it gets completely out of hand until she admits that she really wants a plate of lima beans and then her stripes go away. And it's just kind of shows like, you should not change who you are to fit in with other people. And we did a whole lesson about how you should respect things in other people, whether it be the foods they like to eat, the clothes they like to wear, the games they like to play. And it, I think it's a good representation of like, this won't actually happen to you, but this could go on in your head, this crazy phenomenon of like not feeling like yourself, not feeling true to yourself if you're gonna pretend to be someone else. Makes sense. Awesome. Well, we are a little bit past the time, but I wanted to sneak that last bit into Carrie. I don't want to put pressure on you, but I also want to cut you off if you had one that, that you wanted to share. Okay. Um, so awesome. It was all these great suggestions. We've given Emily and Molly and all the new educators who are going to be watching this a, a great list of, of books to, to dive into and some summer reading once this whole year kind of kind of wraps up and goes through it. So I hope everyone has an awesome week. It is March is coming up. Women's History Month is, is this month. So we can dive into that as well. And I hope you all have an awesome week and we'll see you back here next Sunday night as well. See you later. Thank you.